And next we have Rao, who has given some flavor of this presentation probably a hundred times in the last year. Um, he is a leading figure, I would say, on planning with LLMs, or I guess the difficulties of planning with LLMs. So okay. take it away. Thank you. Uh, so you guys wanted diversity. I am the diversity candidate. I'm the AI guy who is unfortunately here on at the peak of new, new RIPS deadline. The rest of you are all verification people, so you're very happy. Uh, I, okay, so anyway, um, and so the, I'm the only guy who didn't see himself in that LLM definition that Stefano put. So that gives you an idea. Anyway, so, um, so, uh, so basically, neurosymbolic AI tends to have a bit of a bad rap because it's like waiting for the good old days to come back so that these deep learning people will start taking a backseat. Um, so I wanted to tell you the two things that I do that are most relevant to neurosymbolic uh, systems and neurosymbolic AI. Uh, one is very short uh, part is internal symbolic reasoning versus external symbolic interfaces. I'm not really sure whether machines need to do internal symbolic reasoning um, and, and whether if they do it, they'll actually be um, useful and more effective, but certainly they need to have an external symbolic interface. And we've been doing uh, human AI interaction with respect to symbols as a lingua franca, and I'll, I'll show you a very small part of that. And then the second one is with respect to the LLMs, um, that uh, it's become sort of uh, uh, fashionable to say that if you take uh, a linguistic description of some decision problem, and then, uh, essentially convert it into some formal representation and throw it over to a solver out on the other side, then it becomes neurosymbolic. I tend to think that's a pretty sad way of thinking of neurosymbolic. Pipelines are kind of uninteresting. So I'll tell you how LLMs uh, can be used for planning, except it won't be a, a sort of a pipeline. Uh, so that would be actually the main thing that neurosymbolic uh, LLM modular architectures. And the first one, um, you know, in, in AI, the human AI interaction has become explanations by pointing, which is saliency regions, and advised by nodding, which is up-down words. That's what RLHF has become mostly. I think that's a sad uh, view of civilization. Um, and I think we, what, what we've been doing essentially is sort of looking at uh, symbols as a lingua franca, uh, where um, even if, in fact, the machine does reasoning in its own representations, it will convert the explanation into the shared vocabulary um, and then provide the explanations um, at the time of uh, the demanded, uh, when the explanations are demanded. There's a paper and I clear for that. And similarly, uh, humans should be able to provide symbolic advice, which then the machine has to operationalize it with respect to its own internal, even if it's using uh, deep reinforcement learning theories and so on. So those are the two things, and there are stuff on that, uh, including a book that we have written. That's actually, I just wanted to mention that, and then I get back into the <laughs> main part of today's talk, which is uh, LLMs and planning, and in particular, LLM modulo architectures uh, for planning. So in fact, why do you even need to say anything new about LLMs and planning. Up front, um, if you are at all are familiar with system one, system two metaphors, uh, LLMs are really a, a, a huge external system one. They don't really have any, you don't have any reason to believe that they have any sort of a system two abilities. So I assume that they won't have any planning abilities from the beginning, um, but then, NeurIPS is full of papers saying LLMs are doing planning left and right. Okay, it's like amazing uh, cottage industry that's going on. Unfortunately, many of these papers are wrong. Um, so this is GPT-4O that just came out. I asked it to solve the following problem. Uh, you know, C is on top of A, um, B is on table. Just put A on top of B on top of C. That's it. Okay. Um, and then without moving block C. That's the trick that I put. And notice that it hallucinates the specification, it hallucinates the physics, it halluc also hallucinates the goal. So essentially, it doesn't solve the problem at all. You have to sit there, keep checking, please change, please change. And in the end, if it becomes correct, you give it credit. I don't know, humans normally don't give credit to anybody else, but they're very happy to give credit to LLMs because that's how you get papers. Okay, so the reason people get confused about this is that LLMs are essentially generative AI systems and generative AI learns the distribution. So style is a distributional property and correctness is an instance level property and you don't get 
uh, correctness by learning style. And, and so um, essentially that's something that people keep forgetting. And so, you know, this is basically my uh, go-to thing. In fact, I, since I'm mostly talking about LLMs not doing planning, I don't get to do startup money. So I'm selling these t-shirts. Um, so impressive reasoning ability as LLMs are really prompter knowing the answer. You need to be able to see that it's actually giving you the wrong plan. And that's no fun way of doing planning. Um, in particular, if I have to give a, a short summary of this talk, the red part says LLMs cannot do planning uh, in autonomous modes. I would actually gone to reasoning too, but I actually wrote papers on planning, so I'm just going to stick to that. They can't do planning in autonomous modes. Uh, the kind of random things that you may have heard of, like China, chain of thought, react, fine tuning, etc., don't help that much. Um, and it's connected to what Stefano was saying. In fact, for the case of chain of thought, they don't actually have any generalization abilities, so they actually don't work. Uh, we have written papers on this. They can't improve by self-verification. There is this crazy uh, notion that people have that if you can't generate, maybe you can criticize yourself. If you don't know how things are done, criticizing yourself actually worsens your performance. Okay, so you should keep your mouth shut and take the first um, uh, guess that you get. So we can actually show that self-verification doesn't help. Um, on the other hand, LLMs can actually be useful in planning. They are extremely good um, approximate um, as generators, as sources of knowledge, and they're universal guessers for everything. And so you can combine them in uh, um, with um, essentially uh, formal verifiers, as well as these verifiers themselves can be learned, as well as uh, the verifiers uh, some of which are actually style verifiers that LLMs can play the part in. And so LLMs wind up playing multiple roles in guessing plans, guessing domain models, elaborating the problem specification, and translating the formats. And so that's yeah, essentially an, a way of doing LLM modular architecture, where LLMs are used uh, to provide these kinds of guesses, which then there is actually, it's a generate test framework, with the tester being a uh, sound, as long as the test is sound, you are essentially guaranteed to get a sound uh, system, but and, and whether or not it's complete depends on how good a uh, guesser um, large language models are. So I'm not making all this stuff up. There's a bunch of papers on this. Plus there's also a three and a half hour tutorial that I gave at AAAI, which I also be giving like a two hour version of it, ICML, so that you might be looking at it. You might want to look at it if you're interested. Anyway, so coming back to the planning part, as I said, there's no real reason to believe that LLMs can do planning. Um, back two, three years, two years back, we basically looked at uh, GPT-3 and found that essentially it cannot solve just block stacking problems. As long as you do it automatically, that means you don't actually keep giving it hints. If you just let it generate the plan and check whether it's correct or not. In essence, we actually took international planning competition um, uh, problems and then checked whether it actually can generate any plans. And that's a paper and it you know, basically has been getting a bunch of citations and then the question, of course, is GPT-4 came along, does the sparks in GPT-4 help? It turns out that it, they helped a little bit. It went from about 3% to 30% for blo blocks world. For logistics, it's still at 14%. These are all small toy world domains, blocks world and logistics. This is the stuff that we're building AGI on. We can't actually solve blocks world. Okay, so the question is, are LLMs retrieving based on names? Or are they reasoning? So it improved, right, from 3% to 20%. Are they really become better at reasoning? Um, I already showed you GPT-4.0 that came less than a week back with Scarlett Johansson's voice, um, cannot solve it, right? Um, so the question is, are they really reasoning or retrieving? Uh, and so uh, as uh, Shakespeare said, a block by any other name would stack just as strong. So you take the blocks world, change the names. Okay, so instead of saying, pick up a block, you say attack an object, unstack a block from another block, you say feast object from another object. So essentially, you just translated the words. It's the same exact domain. Every formal system can solve this as well as this equally easily, okay? So you give it to LLMs, performance plummets, 0%. Okay, why? Because LLMs are not actually doing reasoning. They are actually doing approximate retrieval from the data that they have. Okay, so that's the uh, New Rips paper, it's a spotlight. And we also made a, uh, plan, a benchmark for planning uh, based on that. That's also available, people are using it. In fact, that's the uh, uh, thing that we did. So of course, you'll say this is 2023 stuff. What about last week? Because every week there's a new system, new LLM that's coming out. This is 
GPT-4 O, GPT-4, GPT-4 Turbo, Claude 3 Opus, Gemini Pro, Llama 70B. You'll notice all of them are very close to zeros in the um, modified block solved problem, which are essentially because they don't have any information about them, and so they actually have to do reasoning, which they can't do, okay? So that gives you enough of a reason to believe that I must be saying something you know, that about their reasoning powers. How about the chain of thought prompting? <laughs> it turns out that uh, chain of thought prompting, um, I'll take extra few minutes and I'll just reduce the talk, uh, questions because I'm an outsider, you can ask me outside questions, okay? <laughs> So chain of thought prompting um, doesn't generalize. It turns out there's tons and tons of paper written on chain of thought prompting. What we did was, in general, chain of thought essentially involves giving advice and hoping that somebody else can use that advice, not just in that problem, but problems similar to that. For it to be useful, you need to be able to generalize from the advice. Uh, so we gave um, chain of thought prompting for all planning problems are just the block solved problems. In the case of block solved, you can put all the blocks on the table and then just stack them in the right order and you will be within twice the optimal length of the block solved problem. Or you can just consider table to stack problems or you can consider, I'm sorry, uh, or you can consider just lexicographic problems. And you'll see that if from these pictures and there's a paper on that and there's some news coverage too, that they actually die as the number of blocks increase. So they're only ever going to be able to use the advice you gave on the specific, a very, very similar to the specific problem that you are given. Now, why are people believing this is possible? Because it's nice to believe that LLMs actually can do generalization, even if they don't. Okay, can LLMs self-critique? Unfortunately, once again, the reason they think that is the case is generation is typically harder computationally than verification. So for planning, the kind of planning problems we're looking at, Planning is P-space complete, but for verification, it's only polynomial time. So people think maybe they can't do the P-space complete problems, but it, the LLMs can do polynomial problems. That's crazy because they're not doing any reasoning. They can actually solve semi-decidable, undecidable problems with the same lack of guarantees as they can solve constant time problems. And we have to keep that in mind in general. And so in fact, we looked at this in the context of the game of 24 graph coloring and the kind of planning problems I looked at. And we show that when LLMs actually correct themselves, their performance worsens. So it's, you'd think that there's really no chance to become worse than what they already are, they can it turns out, if they just have to you know, verify themselves, okay? Um, so self-critiquing actually worsens uh, performance. The reason this is, is because correctness, as I said, is a, is a uh, property of the instance and they're doing style-based thing. So if you do want to just check the style, they can be useful. So this one is a recent paper from our group. It's saying, you can look at the style of the behavior not the goal correctness, but is the kind of behavior reasonable? So for example, they can provide criticism such as when you're giving the knife, maybe the one which you're showing the um, pointy end may not be as good a plan than the one where you're showing you the non-pointy end to the human. So they're actually good at style-based corrections. Um, on the other hand, literature is full of these claims about planning abilities. Why is that the case? It turns out, that planning involves getting the knowledge as well as dealing with the interactions. Getting knowledge approximately is something that LLMs can do, especially if it has been in the pre-training corpus. They cannot do the reasoning part. To show that is the case, we took the same blocks world and relaxed the interactions. Basically, don't have any delete list. That means actions can't get into each other's way. Remove all the preconditions so that all actions can be done all the time. And you see that as you relax, the amount of green increases. The only reason the red is still left is because LLMs can't count, okay? So that's the reason why if there are like 15 goals, they may not actually support all 15, they might only support you know, 10 of them, okay? So the reason people assume that they're doing planning is because they're actually looking for high-level plans and hoping that that will be correct. So my joke is, they will give you wedding plans, but please don't get married with them because for the wedding to actually happen, the logistics have to be correct and that won't be the case. So approximate retail of plans is not planning. And I'm very worried, and you should be too, that if this is what LLMs can do as planning, um, what are we doing about this agentic evolution? Agentic revolution where you allow LLMs to actually start source the, the, the tools outside. Okay, actions. Okay, starting, you know, giving actions 
to LLMs which can't do planning is like giving guns to kids, for example. And you can have just as good a outcome and you should be careful about it. Okay, so the question is, can they help at all in planning? Again, it turns out that they can, and this is my last part, that um, you have to understand that the way they can help is L, you know, the old GoFi used to be, you go talk to the experts, get rules, and then somehow run out that rule-based system. This thing has changed in the case of LLMs. LLM sort of removes that whole thing and say that I will actually give you approximate rules, approximate recipes, approximate uh, planning knowledge no, with no guarantees. And then you can use that with respect to you know, outside, okay? So that's one way of thinking about it. And in fact, it's like an ironic thing. If you give what you know about a toy world to the computer and have it solve new instances, that's considered good old fashioned AI and that's considered cheating. Um, you people don't mind it, but you know, it's considered bad in AI. Uh, but if you capture all that humanity knows about everything and feed it all to the computer and ask it to do the instances, then it's not cheating, it's actually LLMs. Um, so this is basically the architecture that I was suggesting earlier, where we actually are using um, LLM in multiple roles in terms of guessing the plans, guessing the domain models, et cetera, and then using the critiques to verify and then give a back prompt saying, change your guess again because of the following things. Is it really listening to the criticism? Not necessarily, but at least you'll come up with a new guess. And as long as the critiques are minding the store, you can guarantee that unsound plans are not sent out. Okay. In particular, this summary <laughs> thing basically says, LLM plays a multiple roles. In fact, there's a new RIPS paper that we have that shows how you can actually get the kind of PDDL domain models that run the uh, criticism critiques themselves can be learned from the LLM with much less effort from the humans. Normally, humans had to write them before. Uh, similarly, you can actually use LLMs as a style critics directly. That I pointed that out because they are actually better for that. Um, and then, of course, they also can collate criticism and uh, they can also you know, help in extending the specification, elaborating on the specification. As I said, um, um, this stuff is kind of relevant to things like fun search and alpha geometry that Google DeepMind folks did. That's the same way of using LLMs. You know, let them be the great idea generators. We all sometimes are looking for ideas. Somebody is passing by, you ask for the idea, but you still have to check whether the idea will work for you or not. The only place where ideas themselves would be okay, and this is the kind of thing that gives uh, worries to Alvaro, is I can generate a huge number of attack plans for your computer and start executing them. Some work, some don't. And if one works, you are, you know, the other system comes down. So there are ways of using even the lack of correctness um, in, in a kind of an adversarial situation. But in general, if you're looking for correctness, it becomes problematic. So if you just have a single critique, we have shown in the uh, New Rips paper that the same blocks world, which has like 30, 20% uh, correctness, it can goes up to 82% and done. 82% um, with just 15 back and forth backdrops. Okay, just 15 times calling back and forth. That's basically the only thing. And uh, there is a travel planning benchmark that somebody else put out, and it turns out that they have shown 0.6% accuracy on their benchmark. It's not even something that I put out. And we used, last week, we started doing some experiments with it, and the preliminary experiments already show that just with 10 back prompt cycles, we go from about 4% uh, to 20% accuracy on the travel plans, okay? So this is the way you can combine things and it's not a pipeline anymore because this is going to be a cycle with the backgrounds coming back and forth, okay? Uh, I, I, this was the one about the domain models. I will skip over it. Formatting is something that LLMs can do very usefully. I'll skip over that too. And I showed you this already. And uh, so I showed you this and I'll just stop here. Um, and uh, actually remind you that I do do, in addition to LLMs not doing planning, I think I have better connections to neurosymbolic reasoning in terms of human-AI interaction too. If you're interested, you can talk to me. Thank you for your time.